Our next award goes to the Outstanding Doctoral and Research University Professor of the Year. And our winner is Avatar Kaw, Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida. Introducing Professor Kaw is his former student, Daniel Miller. Daniel, will you please come forward? Good afternoon. I have known Dr. Kaw for over four years, and during this time I have gained a tremendous amount of respect for him. Dr. Kaw is truly an innovator and the single most influential teacher I have ever known. I first met him in two of his classes as an undergraduate in 2008. These classes were considered in the five most difficult in the curriculum, and I was continually pushed and challenged throughout the entire semester. It was rough. However, I've never had a teacher as efficient and effective as Dr. Kaw. In fact, Dr. Kaw possesses all the qualities of a great educator. He is dedicated, innovative, motivated, and he's fair. He displays genuine compassion for his students and their development. He is a leader. When you're in one of his lectures, Dr. Kaw inspires you to learn, inspires you to seek more, inspires you to ask questions. He's extremely talented in relaying information in a manner that sticks for life. When it came time for graduate school, I was pleased to hear that Dr. Ska, Dr. Ka accepted my request to be my major advisor. I knew I would be pushed harder than ever before. I knew that the next four semesters would be my most difficult. But I also knew that working under his supervision, I would develop into a top-notch professional. Right from the start, I knew I was lucky. But I didn't realize how lucky until I, after I graduated. It was this time when I started talking to my new colleagues at my new job. I spoke with one in particular who graduated in 1991 and had Dr. Ka as a teacher. He still remembers the engineering foundations and sound mathematical modeling that taught to him by Dr. Ka. He vividly described to me, with, he vividly described to me the problems Dr. Ka would solve in lecture. This may sound like an anomaly, but I personally know of at least five other practicing engineers from, from various graduating years that can do the same. And they do it with pride. You can hear it in their voice. The dedication that Dr. Ka has to teaching is apparent. He understands that each student requires something special and that the methods of instruction should be mixed to meet the student's needs. He uses all the possible modes of learning to reach out to the student. You can even follow him on Twitter and Facebook. Dr. Ka is truly a modern day pioneer in education. I am fortunate to have had Dr. Ka as a teacher and I, have, and I am proud to have worked on him on several projects. He's truly an outstanding role model and a wonderful mentor. Please join me in recognizing his exceptional career and in honoring him as a US Professor of the Year. It is with great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Arthur Ka. Thank you, Dan, for that kind introduction. I share this award with all the students who have taken a small part of their journey with me over the last 25 years. Without a dark doubt, they have collectively taught me more than I have taught them. And there have been students, which include Dan, who have individually taught me, not through precept, but by example, about seeking grace, facing adversity, and not the least when not to open my mouth. <laughs> Thank you to the Council of Advancement and Support of Education and the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching for this honor and for the recognition of the importance of undergraduate education. Thanks to TIA CREF for sponsoring today's luncheon and Phi Beta Kappa for sponsoring tonight's reception. When I started teaching a course in numerical methods in 1988, that was a long time ago, students would ask me questions that could not be answered on the spot as they involved lengthy calculations. Most times, I would go back to my office and write short computer programs to find answers to those questions. This led me to thinking that I should write simulation programs for the course, and since my fellow instructors in other universities must be asked similar questions, why not send these programs to them on a bunch of 1.44 megabyte disks. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
between seeking tenure and raising a family, this project was turning out to be a joyous but time-consuming affair. I wrote a proposal to National Science Foundation so that I could buy some time and assistance. After four attempts between 1990 and 2001, we finally got funded. Along the way, colleagues and students at many institutions, including Arizona State University, Mississippi Valley State University, and Old Dominion joined the effort. The courseware we have developed, assessed, and revised in the last 11 years gets a million page views annually, and we'll be getting a million views for the YouTube videos this year. To be able to reach students all over the world is heartening. To be able to clarify a concept that a student did not get in the confines of a classroom is encouraging. And the most, to learn that it prevented a student from dropping the class is quite satisfying. Many similar exciting things are happening in higher education today. Uh, massive open online courses and open education resources are challenging all of us to up our game a notch and take undergraduate education even more seriously. This is already taking place in bolstering our students' individualized experiences, whether it's through internships, co-op, research experiences, and independent study. These changes in modes of course delivery are also meeting the needs of our ever-changing student demographics. The National Center for Education Statistics reports that two out of three students are working, and half of those who do work, they do so full-time. More than two out of five students are attending community colleges, and one out of four is over the age of 30. At the same time, only one, I'll repeat, only one out of our 25 students at our top 146 selected universities hail from the lowest income quartile. Knowing this, we still use archaic metrics such as four-year graduation rates and student to faculty ratios to rate the effectiveness of our institutions. The measures by which our institutions should be graded needs a major overhaul in the 21st century. If our own accreditation agencies for individualized programs have adopted this overhaul in the expected objectives of our programs, there's no reason why we should not follow suit. I'll be the first one to say that I was not born in a log cabin that I built myself. <laughs> I have been fortunate to have family and friends who have been our greatest cheerleaders. Uh, I want to thank my spouse, Sherry, who's here for her unwavering support and for laughing at all my lame jokes. Uh, you are my rock. Uh, thank you to our children, Candice and Angeli, for being hard teachers of my soft skills and for challenging my comfort zones. Thank you to the National Science Foundation for supporting the development of the open courseware. Thank you to the University of South Florida colleagues and administration, many of whom are here, including President Genshaft, Rose Wilcox and Dean Winsick, thank you for coming, for creating a vibrant learning environment in a non-traditional setting, and nurturing the balance among the trinity of research, teaching, and service. Thank you to my friends Ali, Sunit, Komen, Rajiv, Ramesh, Ram, and Ibrahim for sharing my moments of joy and carrying me during times of adversity, and also for the numerous lengthy, repetitive, but categorical discussions we have about education. Thank you to my late father for being a role model of service leadership and for giving me the love of movies and music. Thank you to my mother for raising me while making innumerable sacrifices and for the wise counsel every Saturday morning. Lastly, this award is for all whose gentle but strong persuasions come from the search of truth and the power of quiet. Thank you, Susan Cain. Avatar call on behalf of Case and the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement uh, of Teaching, it is an honor to recognize you as the 2012 Outstanding Doctoral and Research University Professor of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs>